whether compoundable, cognizable and bailable Section 77A of the IT Act provides that, subject to certain exceptions, all offenses under the IT Act for which the punishment is imprisonment for a term of three, three years or less, are compoundable. The provisions of Sections 265B and 265C of the Code of Criminal Procedure, 1973, CRPC, shall apply with respect to such compounding. Section 77B of the IT Act provides that notwithstanding anything contained in the CRPC, all offences punishable with imprisonment of three, three years and above under the IT Act shall be cognizable and all offences punishable with imprisonment of three, three years or less shall be boilable. Most of the cyber crimes covered under the IT Act are punishable with imprisonment of three, three years or less. The cyber crimes which are punishable with imprisonment of more than three, three years are publishing or transmitting obscene material in electronic form under Section 67 of the IT Act, publishing or transmitting of material containing sexually explicit act, ETC, in electronic form under Section 67A of the IT Act, publishing or transmitting of material depicting children in sexually explicit act, ETC, in electronic form under Section 67B of the IT Act, and cyber terrorism under Section 66F of the IT Act. All of the cyber crimes under the IPC are bail-able other than offenses under Section 420, cheating and dishonestly inducing delivery of property, Section 468, forgery for the purpose of cheating, Section 411, dishonestly receiving stolen property, Section 378, theft, and Section 409, criminal breach of trust by public servant, or by banker, merchant or agent, which are non-bailable. Offences under Sections 463 and 465, Forgery, Sections 425 and 426, Mischief, Section 468, Forgery for the purpose of cheating, Section 469, Forgery for the purpose of harming reputation, and Section 292, Sale, ETC, of Obscene Books, ETC, of the IPC are non-compoundable offences while offences under Sections 378 and 379, Theft, 400 420, cheating and dishonestly inducing delivery of property, sections 425 and 426, mischief when the only loss or damage caused is loss or damage to a private person, section 509, word, gesture or act intended to insult the modesty of a woman, section 411, dishonestly receiving stolen property, and section 419, punishment for cheating by personation, of the IPC are compoundable offenses. Of these, offences under sections 420 and 509 can be compounded only with the permission of the court. Most of the cyber crimes under the IPC are cognizable other than the offences under sections 425 and 426, mischief, and sections 463 and 465, forgery, which are non-cognizable. The overlap between the provisions of the IPC and the IT Act may sometimes lead to an anomalous situation wherein certain offences are bailable under the IPC and not under the IT Act and vice versa and certain offences are compoundable under the IPC and not under the IT Act and vice versa. For instance, in case of hacking and data theft, offences under sections 43 and 66 of the IT Act that are bailable and compoundable while offences under section 378 of the IPC are non-bailable and offences under section 425 of the IPC are non-compoundable. Further, in case of the offence of receipt of stolen property, the offence under Section 66B of the IT Act is bailable while the offence under Section 411 of the IPC is non-bailable. Similarly, in case of the offence of identity theft and cheating by personation, the offences under Section 66C and 66D of the IT Act are compoundable and bail-able while the offences under Sections 463, 465 and 468 of the IPC are non-compoundable and the offences under Sections 468 and 420 of the IPC are non-bailable. Finally, in case of obscenity, the offences under Sections 67, 67A and 67B of the IT Act are non-bailable while the offences under Section 292 and 294 of the IPC are bailable. 
This issue has been dealt with by the Bombay High Court in a case in Maharashtra wherein offences under sections 408 and 420 of the IPC that are non-bail able and cannot be compounded other than with the permission of the court were in conflict with offences under sections 43, 65 and 66 of the IT Act that are bail able and compoundable. In a case in Maharashtra, certain individuals were accused of theft of data and software from their employer and charged under sections 408 and 420 of the IPC and also under sections 43, 65 and 66 of the IT Act. All of these sections, other than section 408 of the IPC, have been discussed above. Section 408 of the IPC deals with criminal breach of trust by clerk or servant and states that, whoever, being a clerk or servant or employed as a clerk or servant, and being in any manner entrusted in such capacity with property, or with any dominion over property, commits criminal breach of trust in respect of that property, shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to seven years, and shall also be liable to fine. Offences under sections 408 and 420 of the IPC are non-bailable and cannot be compounded other than with the permission of the court. Offences under sections 43, 65 and 66 of the IT Act are bailable and compoundable. Therefore, the petitioners pleaded that the charges against them under the IPC be dropped and the charges against them under the IT Act be investigated and pursued. A suitable home for cyber offences We currently have a situation where a number of offences are penalised by both the IPC and the IT Act, even though the ingredients of both offences are the same. There are subtle differences in punishments under these statutes, especially in aspects like whether the offence is bailable or compoundable or cognizable. An offence such as obscenity may take place through different types of media, both online or offline. However, it could result in unfairness if two, two different statutes apply to the same offence theft is theft, irrespective of whether the stolen property is digital or physical. Obscenity transmitted through the internet should be treated at par with obscenity which is transmitted offline. IPC's treatment of stalking The legislature's treatment of the offence of stalking, accomplished through the insertion of new section 354D in the IPC through the Criminal Law Amendment, Act, 20135, is a case in point. Section 354 depenalizes the offence of stalking, whether it has a cyber component or not. If a man follows a woman and contacts, or attempts to contact, such woman to foster personal interaction repeatedly despite a clear indication of disinterest by such woman, it amounts to stalking. If a man monitors the use by a woman of the internet, email or any other form of electronic communication, it will also result in the offence of stalking. There are a few exemptions to this offence of stalking, and all the defaces apply irrespective of whether the stalking is cyber stalking or not. The punishment prescribed for stalking by section 354D of the IPC does not discriminate on the basis of the presence or absence of the cyber component. Amendments to the IPC to cover cyber crimes The Indian legislature has from time to time made a number of amendments to the IPC to specifically cover cyber crimes. Some of the important amendments are as follows. A new section 29A was created to define electronic record by linking it with the definition given in the IT Act 6. A new subsection 3 was inserted in section 4 of the IPC relating to the extension of the IPC to extraterritorial offences that states that the provisions of the IPC shall be applicable to any person in any place, without and beyond India, committing an offence targeting a computer resource located in India 7, in sections 118 and 119 of the IPC, that deal with the concealment of a design to commit an offence punishable with death or imprisonment for life and a public servant concealing a design to commit an offence which it is his duty to prevent, respectively, the words, voluntarily conceals by any act or omission or by the use of encryption or any other information hiding tool, the existence of a design, were inserted before the words, to commit such offence or makes any representation which he knows to be false respecting such design. 8. In section 464 of the IPC, which penalises the making of a false document, the phrase, digital signature, was replaced with the phrase, electronic signature, in all places. The section was also amended to include the making of false electronic records and affixing electronic signatures under its ambit and the phrase, affixing electronic signature, was given the same meaning as it has under the IT Act 9. 
electronic record was included within the ambit of sections 164, 172, 173, 175, 192, 204, 463, 466, 468, 469, 470, 471, 474 and 476 of the IPC that earlier only provided for documents, books, paper, writing, or records, as the case may be, in section 466 of the IPC, which deals with forgery of court records or of public registers, the term, register, was defined to include any list, data or record of any entries maintained in an, electronic form, as defined in section 2, 1, R, of the IT Act 10, and a new section 354 D was inserted in the IPC that introduces the offense of cyber stalking, which has been discussed above. Cyber Terrorism, Section 66F of the IT Act prescribes punishment for cyber terrorism. Whoever, with intent to threaten the unity, integrity, security or sovereignty of India or to strike terror in the people or any section of the people, denies or causes the denial of access to any person authorized to access a computer resource, or attempts to penetrate or access a computer resource without authorization or exceeding authorized access, or introduces or causes the introduction of any computer contaminant, and by means of such conduct causes or is likely to cause death or injuries to persons or damage to or destruction of property or disrupts or knowing that it is likely to cause damage or disruption of supplies or services essential to the life of the community are adversely affect critical information infrastructure, is guilty of cyber terrorism. Whoever knowingly or intentionally penetrates or accesses a computer resource without authorization or exceeding authorized access, and by means of such conduct obtains access to information, data or computer database that is restricted for reasons for the security of the state or foreign relations, or any restricted information, data or computer database, with reasons to believe that such information, data or computer database so obtained may be used to cause or likely to cause injury to the interests of the sovereignty and integrity of India, the security of the state, friendly relations with foreign states, public order, decency or morality or in relation to contempt of court, defamation or incitement to an offence, or to the advantage of any foreign nation, group of individuals or otherwise, is also guilty of cyber terrorism. Whoever commits or conspires to commit cyber terrorism shall be punishable with imprisonment which may extend to imprisonment for life. There is no provision in the IPC that mirrors section 66F of the IT Act, Though Section 121 of the IPC, waging, or attempting to wage war, or abetting waging of war, against the Government of India, does cover this offence partially. Thanks a lot of watching the video please feel free to give suggestion, send motivational videos for the of benefit society, raise your voice by making and sending plays, stories etc let us create awareness together. Please feel free to call us if you require any help. You can also be a part of our team or channel as a member or associate please call us our contact phone no at 9818003999 or on another phone no at 9540003999 or email at info.consumertimes at gmail.com visit our website www.consumertimes.in please like this video please like share and subscribe our channel will motivate our team to work hard thank you